Have you heard that whole body vibration can help to improve bone health? Vibration for better bones has become quite a topic of discussion in the bone health community. And today, we're going to look at some of the research studies regarding bone health and whole body vibration, and also talk about what you should look for in a vibration plate if you're considering using whole body vibration for yourself. Hi, I'm Sarah, and I'm a nutritional health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition and a 500-hour trained yoga teacher with additional training that's specific to osteoporosis and yoga. I'm on a mission to reduce fractures, and I am so pleased to have you join me in the journey for better bone health. So let's get into what the research says about whole body vibration. The research started out a bit mixed, but it seems to be becoming more and more clear the more research that is performed. I'm going to share some studies with you that look at the potential benefits that can come from whole body vibration. People respond somewhat differently to whole body vibration depending on their age and their situation. For today's discussion, I'll be focusing on how postmenopausal women tend to respond to whole body vibration. For people who have a physical complication or who've had a significant spinal injury or some other reason that prevents them from doing more standard forms of weight-bearing exercise, such as lifting weights or doing other osteoporosis safe exercises that build strength, then whole body vibration may be a really good option. The gist of the way that whole body vibration works is that a person stands on a plate or a platform that provides low frequency, low amplitude, mechanically driven vibration that's designed to stimulate new bone growth. Dr. Rubin, along with a group of researchers, performed a study that was published back in 2004 in the Journal of Bone and Mineral Research that examined vibration and bone health. The study was conducted over one year. The study included 70 women who were between three and eight years past menopause. The study was double blind, meaning that the participants and the researchers did not know who received the actual vibration therapy. Each day, half of the participants were given two 10 minute low magnitude vibrations. The other half of the participants stood on a placebo device for the same length of time. DEXA scans were used at the beginning of the study and then at month three, month six, and month 12 to measure bone mineral density at the spine, hip, and distal radius. 56 of the 70 women completed the study. At the conclusion of the study, those participants in the placebo group lost 2.13% of their bone mineral density in the femoral neck where the thigh bone connects to the hip bone while those in the treatment group showed a 2.17% relative benefit. In the spine, the placebo group showed a decrease of 1.6%, while the treatment group had a 1.5% relative benefit. There was another interesting finding from this study. For women who were on the thinner side, there was a higher percent benefit at the spine of 3.35% relative benefit. This study was small, but it showed really positive outcomes and a possible alternative to a pharmaceutical approach to improving bone health. In another research study performed by Dr. Rubin and a group of researchers that was published in 2007, so just a few years later, there were more interesting findings about how vibration therapy helps to improve bone health. Some background information for this study is that deep inside our bone marrow, we have stem cells that can turn into either fat cells or osteoblasts, which are our bone building cells. We'd like for these cells to become osteoblasts rather than fat cells. So there's something inside our bones called PPAR gamma. And when there are higher concentrations of PPAR gamma, the stem cells inside our bone marrow are more inclined to become fat cells. In the research study performed by Dr. Rubin and his colleagues, they found that vibration therapy actually reduced the amount of PPAR gamma by 27%. 
This is an interesting finding because it means that the stem cells inside our bodies are more likely to become osteoblasts with vibration therapy. This study also showed the mechanical vibration also reduced several risk factors for developing type 2 diabetes, including the triglyceride content that's found in our liver by 39%. These studies show positive benefits that can come from whole body vibration therapy, and they inspired other researchers to do further research on this subject. In 2015, Brunetti conducted a randomized trial on how vibration therapy could benefit the quadriceps. These are the muscles that are on the front of our thighs and their impact on leg power, balance, and bone density in postmenopausal women. This study had 40 participants who were divided into two groups, with one group receiving a placebo treatment and the other group getting the vibration therapy for 10 minutes for three days in a row. Brunetti did not observe apparent improvement in DEXA T scores of the treatment group, but did observe a decrease in the T scores of the placebo group. Improvements in balance and leg power were also found. Brunetti concluded that short-term vibration therapy is non-invasive, safe, and sufficient enough to considerably curtail the progression of demineralization in bones in women who are post-menopause. The study found that vibration therapy was beneficial for bone health. The study was short-term, and in that short-term, didn't find an increase in bone mineral density, but it did find even in that short term period that vibration therapy stopped bone loss. The finding is significant. In an ideal world, we would all like to be able to reverse our osteoporosis. In some cases that might be possible and in others, not so much. But the thing to keep in mind is that there is something that each one of us can do to help improve our bone health and to reduce our fracture risk. Vibration therapy may not be able to reverse osteoporosis, but it stops continued bone loss as a minimum and with longer use may be able to actually help build bone. That's a major win in my book. Vibration therapy is showing itself to be beneficial enough that space agencies are using whole body vibration therapy on astronauts who are returning to Earth after a long-term space mission as a way to help them to regain both muscle and bone mass. Astronauts develop space osteopenia while they're in space because of a lack of gravity pulling on their bones. What's interesting, and I think very hopeful, is that astronauts are able to get out of the osteopenia range when they return to Earth through doing regular weight-bearing exercise, vibration therapy, and having good nutrition. I think that that means that if they can do it, so can we. Whole body vibration therapy is showing itself to be a promising method for regaining muscle mass and function after it's been lost. Our muscle mass and our bone health tend to go together. When our muscles become stronger, so do our bones. Vibration therapy reinforces the blood supply that's going to our bones. It activates the neurons in our muscle fibers, and it reduces the formation of osteoclasts, which are the cells which break down our bones. These are really good things that make vibration therapy a good option to rebuild musculoskeletal strength for people who have physical limitations. Some of the benefits of vibration therapy include improved circulation, boosted metabolism, reduction in back pain, increased muscle mass, increased balance, and increased posture. Whole body vibration therapy appears to be safe and non-invasive. Vibration therapy plates can be quite expensive, ranging from a few hundred dollars to several thousand dollars, depending on the vibration plates. More vibration is not necessarily a better thing when it comes to whole body vibration. It's better to have a lower level of vibration. You want the vibration to be barely perceptible to you when you use it. There's a growing body of research on this subject, and I can't cover all of the research in one video. In the description, there is a link to a review article that I especially liked called Whole Body Vibration Therapy as a Modality for Treatment of Senile and Postmenopausal Osteoporosis, a review article. 
That article discusses several of the more recent research studies that show really positive results for whole body vibration therapy. And I encourage you to check it out for further study for yourself. One of the things that's most helpful about this article is seeing the different frequencies of vibration that are used in the studies. I think this is information that gives a baseline for what to look for in the specs of vibration plates. Earlier in this video, when I shared the study information, I also shared the magnitude of vibration across the screen. Let these amounts be your guide as you look further into vibration therapy. And if this information is helpful, please share it with someone that you know and love. And I look forward to talking with you soon.